So recently I released my desk setup video where I finally took the time to clean my PC. But even though the PC was dust free, some of you did notice that the PC was beginning to show its age. Running a stock cooler and a GTX 970 from 2014, it's been a great machine, but it just isn't able to keep up with my video editing workflow. Which is why Deepcool has kindly reached out for a chance to upgrade my PC. A massive thanks to Deepcool for supporting this video. Until now, I've been doing all my video editing on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And I love my MacBook for its size and power efficiency. But there's always something nice about a PC that you can tinker with, customize and upgrade as your needs change over time. And for me, a big advantage of the PC is the fact that it can support more than two monitors, which means more screen real estate. So I'm building this PC primarily as a productivity machine and maybe a cheeky bit of gaming. For my initial use, it's already showing great performance in DaVinci Resolve and 4K gaming. I'll be running through the components I picked and how to build the PC. And unfortunately, not everything in the build went as smoothly as I'd hoped. So please learn from my mistakes. Remember, if there's anything you want to know about the PC, let me know in the comments below. Alright, so at the center of the PC, I've decided to use the Intel i5-13600K for my CPU. But I did go back and forth between choosing Ryzen or Intel. Even though AMD's 7000 series just introduced a fresh AM5 socket, which probably means a better upgrade path, Intel's 13th gen CPUs have had better performance in most gaming and productivity applications. Plus, it has QuickSync, which is Intel's integrated graphics chip that provides enhanced video encoding and decoding, a feature that's useful for me since I want to use this PC for video editing. Intel's 13th gen CPUs also support both DDR4 and DDR5 memory, which works better for me, but I'll talk about that a little later. Intel is known to change their sockets frequently, so the upgrade path is not fantastic, but realistically, I'm not looking to do yearly upgrades, so by the time I want to do a major upgrade, I'm thinking I'll just replace the motherboard anyway. In the meantime, I still have the option to upgrade my GPU, buy more memory, and upgrade my CPU to the 13900K. Alright, so for now, I decided the 13600K is the sweet spot for me. Even though it's an i5, it's no slouch. It has 8 efficiency cores and 6 performance cores that can boost up to 5.1 GHz. And of course, this has QuickSync. Now, the motherboard I'm using is the Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite AX. It's got Wi-Fi 6E, 2.5 gigabit LAN, plenty of high-speed USB ports, and storage expandability with four M.2 slots and four SATA connectors. Plus, it has large heat sinks, which I'm hoping will help the system run cool and quiet. Okay, so to install the CPU into the motherboard, just make sure the orientation is correct by aligning the arrow on your CPU with the arrow on your motherboard. Since this is an Intel CPU, the notches should line up with the motherboard. Give it a gentle wiggle to make sure the CPU is seated correctly. Then push down the cover and the lever to secure it in place. Alright, so one downside to the 13600K is the fact that it's a very power hungry and hot CPU, which means it's very important to find a way to keep it cool to achieve sustained performance and prevent it from throttling. The cooler you can keep your CPU, the better it will perform. So I've got here Deepcool's LT720 all-in-one liquid cooler, which is Deepcool's latest high-performance liquid cooler featuring three variable speed fans and a 360mm radiator. Besides cooling performance, I think it's equally as important to get a good-looking CPU cooler. It sits smack bang in the middle of your PC and it's probably the most notable element when you're looking at it. The LT720 definitely looks great with its unique infinity mirror design that you can customize to the color of your choice. While the motherboard is still outside of the PC case, install the backplate for the CPU cooler first. Most CPU coolers come with multiple accessories for compatibility with multiple CPU sockets, so make sure you pick the right one when installing. Then just lower the motherboard onto the backplate and press in the appropriate spacer. For memory, I'm going with 64 gigs of Kingston Fury Beast DDR4 memory. I use some RGB RAM for the B-roll of this video because it looks sick. But unfortunately, the RGB model I wanted for this build was out of stock at the time of filming. Still, this will perform just as well. While DDR4 runs at a lower frequency compared to DDR5, DDR4 is a decent bit cheaper per gigabyte of memory. So it really came down to spending more money on memory speed with DDR5 or memory capacity with DDR4. As evident by the number of monitors in my desk setup, I'm a huge fan of multitasking, 
I routinely have an absurd amount of applications open while working, which is why I opted to stick with DDR4 memory for higher memory capacity. To install the memory, open the latch on the memory slots of the motherboard. Line up the notch from the memory stick with your motherboard and slot them into place. Give the memory stick a firm push until you hear the latch click into place. Now for storage, I wanted it to be blazing fast for quick windows and application boot times, as well as fast access to files when I'm video editing. So I went with a 2TB Kingston KC3000. This SSD is a PCIe 4.0 NVMe drive, has a rated read and write speed of 7000 megabytes per second and an impressive 1600 TBW, which means I can cumulatively write 1600 terabytes of data to this drive over its lifetime. 2TB should be plenty of storage to use for Windows OS and any active projects before I offload them to an archive drive. To install the drive, unscrew the heatsink on the motherboard that covers the M.2 slots. Align the notch of your SSD with the motherboard slot. Insert the drive into the slot, then push down on the SSD so that it's parallel with the motherboard. This particular motherboard has an easy latch that locks the SSD into position, but other motherboards may require you to install a standoff and Phillips screw. From here, peel off the film from the thermal pad of the heatsink and reinstall it over your SSD. The case that I'll be using for my build is the Deepcool CH510. This case has an awesome clean design which makes it a great fit for my setup. In terms of cooling, the top panel is completely ventilated with a mesh cover, and both the top and the front of the case can support three 120mm fans two 140mm fans, or a radiator up to 360mm. It also has a few creature comforts, such as a magnetic glass panel which makes it super easy to access the inside of your PC, a convenient headset holder, and a GPU support bracket, which is so useful given how big GPUs have gotten these days. To install the motherboard into the case, lower the board inside, making sure to align the holes on the board with the standoffs. This motherboard has the IO shield pre-installed, but some other boards don't, so you may need to do that first. Then secure it in place with some screws. From here, plug in the case's I.O. connectors into the motherboard. The Deepcool CH510 has a power switch, reset switch, and hard drive LED connectors, which need to be plugged into the corresponding front panel header on the motherboard. The mic and audio connector and USB 3.0 connector will need to be plugged into their own headers as well. Before moving on to the next step, I'm going to install the power connector for the CPU because this area will get a little cramped later on. Since the power supply I'm using is modular, which I definitely recommend for reasons I'll get into later on, I can easily plug this in and feed the cable to the back of the case. Alright, there's a couple things to consider when it comes to airflow. I want to remove as much hot air as possible from inside the case to keep the components cool. And I'm going to do that using fans. So this case comes with one 120mm fan attached to the back of the case. And the CPU cooler includes three more 120mm fans that attach to the radiator. But I'm still going to use some extra fans for this build. This will move the air inside the case faster. And even though I'm installing more fans and have more moving components, the extra fans will lead to a quieter system because each fan doesn't need to work as hard. And it's really when they're spinning at those higher RPMs where we really start to hear that noisy air movement. When it comes to the positioning of everything, I decided to mount the radiator on the front of the case with the intake fans. This CPU has a tendency to run hot, so I wanted to pass fresh air from the intake through the radiator to improve cooling performance. I mounted these on the front so I could have exhaust fans at the top. Hot air naturally rises, so I wanted to take advantage of that and have the exhaust fans remove that heat. Now, how you configure the fans does affect how often you may need to clean your PC. Ideally, you want to create a slight positive air pressure inside the case. This means configuring your fans to have air pulled into the case at a faster rate than air being exhausted. The additional air being pulled in will be forced to leave through the gaps of the case, as opposed to a negative pressure inside the case, which will suck in air and dust through these gaps and increase the amount of dust in the PC. So for my configuration, positive pressure is a bit harder to achieve. This case has an awesome clean design with a solid panel at the front, but it does mean that airflow is restricted to these side vents. Plus, the air will be passing through the radiator which is another obstacle that will slow down intake, whereas my exhaust fans will be largely unrestricted in comparison. 
This just means I'll need to configure the intake speed through software to pull in more air, but it will lead to a louder system. Okay, so to install the radiator, first screw the fans into the radiator before aligning it with the case and securing it with some screws. I'm running the fans in a pull configuration, meaning the fans are going to pull air through the radiator into the case. This will make cleaning in the future easier because any dust buildup will be on the exposed side of the radiator, which is easier to access. When installing the radiator, make sure the highest point of the radiator is above the pump so that any air trapped inside will be able to rise out of the pump, which will be better for its lifespan. From here, install the mounting bracket that matches the backplate to the back of the pump, making sure to avoid touching the pre-applied thermal paste. Then, lower the cooler onto the motherboard and install the nuts to secure it in place. From here, plug in the appropriate connectors from the pump and fans to the motherboard. This particular cooler has three connectors that need to be plugged in. The 4-pin connector that needs to be plugged into the header marked CPU fan connects with each of the radiator fans. From the pump, connect the 3-pin connector to the header on the motherboard marked CPU Opt. Then, connect the 3-pin 5V addressable RGB cable to a 3-pin 5V addressable header on the motherboard. The extra fans that I'm using here are the Deepcool FC120 RGB PWM fans, which come in a pack of three and can be daisy chained together to reduce cable clutter. Now, I did make the mistake of not allowing enough clearance with my radiator, so I did have to do some readjusting. Okay. Install the fans by aligning them with the case before securing them with the included screws. Make sure to daisy chain the fans after installing each one. Then connect the fans with the included connector before plugging it into a system fan header and a 3-pin 5V addressable RGB header on the motherboard. These fans will also need a SATA power connection, but I'll leave that for later after I've installed the power supply. So it was at this point that I realized the cable from the case's exhaust fan was too short to reach any headers. It would have been nice to see the case come included with an extension cable given how short this cable is, but unfortunately it does not. So I did have to pick one up myself to plug it in. For the power supply, I'm using the 1000 watt Deepcool PQ1000M. Both the Intel 13600K and the RTX 4080 that I'll be using are power hungry, so I wanted a beefy power supply to ensure they're running smoothly. Other than that, I also try to stick with a modular power supply like this one. This just makes things a little bit easier during the PC build, and it'll also help with cleaner cable management. To install the power supply, plug in all the necessary cables into the power supply unit. For my build here, I'll need the 24 pin cable for the motherboard, a SATA connector for the exhaust fans, three 8-pin cables for the RTX 4080, and two extra 8-pin cables for the CPU. This is the one I plugged in earlier on in the build, so I'm going to grab that and plug that into the power supply. Then, secure the power supply to the case by positioning it inside and screwing it in place. From here, we want to plug the SATA cable into the fans. The power cables can then be routed through the openings in the case to plug into the right components. Okay, for the graphics card, I've decided to use the beastly Gigabyte RTX 4080 Gaming OC. This card is massive. It's a triple slot card and the heatsink is just humongous. I decided to pick up a higher end card because I use DaVinci Resolve as my editing software of choice, which benefits greatly from a stronger GPU. Not to mention, the RTX 4080 delivers some very solid 4K gaming performance. You know, just in case I need it. To install the GPU, remove the appropriate slot panels and place the GPU into the motherboard's PCIe slot. And it's at this point that I realized this card wouldn't work with this configuration because I completely underestimated the size of this card, which was a bit of a disaster because it means I'll have to run this radiator without the middle fan. I mean, I could use the radiator up top, which would give me enough clearance, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to test out which would be better for CPU cooling. Pulling fresh air through the radiator with only two fans, or mounting the radiator up top with three fans, but exhausting hot air from the case through the radiator. I might even stick that extra fan underneath the GPU to help with intake. Results are pending. Okay, secure the GPU to the back of the case with the case screws. Since this graphics card is so large, I will be taking advantage of this case's inbuilt support bracket to keep it from sagging. To supply power, connect the PCIe cable from the power supply to the GPU. This card requires a 16 pin connection, so I'll have to use the included 16 pin to triple 8 pin power adapter. 
To finish up, tidy up the case with a bit of cable management, peel off any stickers on your components, pop the panels back onto the PC case, Install any external components and don't forget to go into the BIOS of your motherboard to enable the XMP profile for your memory in order to run it at the frequency advertised on the box. From here, install your OS of choice and that is the PC built and ready to go. I'd still like to get some more testing done before I give my final thoughts, but from initial use, it's offering great performance in DaVinci Resolve and stable 4K gaming. And I think it looks pretty good too. Now, if there's anything more you'd like to know about, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. Alright, that's it. I'll see you guys next time.